So, you know, I, I think everyone is probably more than aware, more than plugged into, uh, you know, uh, the landscape when it comes to clinical trials, right? We've seen uh, a boom in uh, the number of, you know, biotechs and pharma companies that have increased over the past few years uh, and a corresponding amount of clinical trials. Um, and, you know, especially in the past couple of years, we know uh, how, uh, you know, how complicated and complex the system uh, is looking with respect to the entire system uh, and specifically supply chain. Everyone has access to the data, but how they access it uh, is a huge, uh, you know, is a huge get gap. Uh, it's a huge pain point and something that something needs to be done about it. Uh, and so I think one of the solutions that's out there uh, that to me is is a real interest um, is, you know, how we can uh, really leverage blockchain. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. If you're if you're new to blockchain and wondering what it is. Uh, I'm sure we've we've all heard of it. Uh, we've all heard of it, certainly in more the popularized context of, of Bitcoin. But foundationally, the technology for blockchain is one that's built on something uh, of a very you know secure, robust platform. Uh, and when you're talking about you know these terms that are used, uh, tamper-proof, uh, timestamp, near real time, etc., these are things that should resonate with us as being important, um, you know, to how we, to, to what we want in a system. Well, that's certainly a technology that I am going to be interested in. And so when I first started to learn, you know, more about blockchain, um, you know, it's not, I'm, I'm not trying to be, you know, one of these people that say, you know, blockchain or bust, right? Um, to me, uh, it presents an opportunity and a solution uh, that I think is really interesting and one that I think, you know, we as an industry should be looking at a lot more because at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're trying to make lives better for the trial participants that um, enroll into these trials. We're also trying to make it easier for, you know, the pharmacies, uh, the PIs, the study coordinators. Uh, that have a huge part in helping us, um, you know, to identify the patients, work with the patients, et cetera. Uh, similar to that, um, you know, is, uh, you know, barcodes, right? So uh, we're all, again, probably very much in sync and aware of the problem that we have in today's world with barcodes. And what I mean by that is that, you know, everyone has, you know, some type of solution with barcoding. Uh, there's no, there's no standardization across, uh, you know, the industry, uh, not, not yet in the clinical space um, when it comes to barcodes. And what that does is that, you know, if uh, it, it presents a, a burden to the site, right? Uh, and so what I mean by that is, you know, let's say we introduce uh, some barcodes at Biogen. Um, and then another company introduces uh, a set of barcodes, um, you know, on their product. Um, and so that creates a lot of additional, um, you know, sort of unnecessary burden on the site from a system uh, engagement perspective. Uh, and I think that's where, that's where we really need to come together on uh, identifying a standard that can be leveraged. Um, you know, with barcoding, uh, there are a lot of benefits to it. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's just sort of seamless in terms of, uh, you know, certainly from an inventory management perspective, uh, what you want to uh, send to a, uh, to a site, uh, how you track it, um, what the site is able to ultimately confirm that, yep, this is the product that Biogen sent me from this warehouse, and now I'm handing it over to this patient. Um, you know, you want that to be uh, done in a secure way. Not to say that we haven't taken steps, but I think we really need to, you know, look at the GS1 standards, which are used, you know, practically in every other industry out there, even on the commercial side of what uh, we do uh, in life sciences and pharma, uh, it's already being rolled out there uh, as a requirement. So now that needs to translate into the clinical environment. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense in terms of the connection uh, of you know barcodes offering that 
you know, that point to point uh, clarity of where your supply is and why, uh, why if it's built on a blockchain platform, it can add some value. Um, so I'm gonna speak a little bit here about uh, the uh, clinical supply uh, blockchain working group. Um, this was started back in 2017. Actually, uh, Pfizer had sort of invited a lot of people to their Cambridge uh, campus uh, to talk about blockchain in general. What is it and how can it be leveraged? So as we, as we developed that charter, uh, we had uh, you know, the uh, fortune of having uh, UCLA involved there to kind of present it from the site perspective. And one of the things that they really brought to our attention is they kind of said, look, you know, what we struggle with is just understanding what is coming to us on a given day uh, and from which sponsor, uh, when is it coming? So it was kind of focusing on that last mile uh, of, you know, after manufacturing and, you know, pack label, uh, distribute really at the point of distribution, getting clarity for the site as to what was coming in and from who. And so to us, you know, we kind of like, well, that's great. That is a perfect example of how blockchain could be, um, you know, very useful where we're all contributing to, uh, you know, the blockchain platform. So, you know, your Pfizer's, your GSK's, Merck's, et cetera, can all, all send data uh, you know, to one platform, which is the KitChain platform. Um, and, you know, you can then see that information. And obviously there were certain permissions in place. So it's not to say that I could see Pfizer data or GSK data, but the important thing was that UCLA was able to see all that data uh, from the sponsors that, uh, you know, that they uh, partner up with. Um, and so that's really where the value came. And, and we created this kit chain uh, proof of concept uh, that is focusing on this app uh, that's able to scan, you know, product when it arrives um, at the site. Uh, and you're able to get that uh, verification also when dispensing it to the patients. Uh, what I want to talk about is a partnership that, um, you know, we had at Biogen uh, with IQVIA uh, and uh, <clears throat> Ledger domain uh, to really, you know, take this chain proof of concept uh, and use it in an actual trial. Um, so uh, at Biogen, we identified a phase one healthy volunteer study uh, that had two sites. Uh, these two sites, uh, we sent uh, basically uh, 160 kits to each of the two sites there. Uh, and what we did is, uh, you know, we used the kit chain app to actually scan them in, uh, scan all the product to verify that, okay, it's all been received. This is the product that it was indeed set by Biogen. Uh, and we did all this in parallel of the study. So for us, you know, we were just trying to prove that, okay, is this a viable solution? Uh, what was really important is that, you know, I think oftentimes, uh, certainly I can speak from, from my perspective, being on the sponsor side, you know, oftentimes you get tunnel vision and you come up with this, you know, great idea or this great solution. You're like, yes, this absolutely is going to work. It's perfect. Um, <clears throat> and you build a lot of momentum. What we sometimes forget is, you know, okay, well, that engagement with the site, you know, do they actually think this is a great idea? Uh, and so I think that was one of the greatest, uh, you know, sort of uh, benefits and, and the best engagement that we got where the pharmacists were uh, super engaged in this entire pilot. You know, they gave direct feedback about, you know, how this would be worthwhile to them. Uh, and that for us kind of cemented that, okay, this is something that we need to continue to look into. Let's watch together as the 160 kits at each site are scanned in a batch quickly with the app showing how we can track kits that are administered or flagged as possibly being out of spec. Meanwhile, all this data gets fed into the leadership dashboard in real time. As you can see, the study has its own dashboard summarizing the study status, shipment status, verification status, overall inventory picture, and any kits needing review. Here's how we envision the app working seamlessly by leveraging standardized barcodes, which can serve as a foundational building block for tracking kits, reducing site burden, and eliminating errors. 
Right now, you're seeing the Miami and Anaheim apps simultaneously feeding the dashboard side by side in real time. So you can see this is pretty, you know, pretty exciting, right? You know, to kind of get this level of information, uh, you can see how both, uh, you know, the use of barcodes is directly feeding into the uh, blockchain platform uh, and how we're able to see that information real time. You know, this, this view that you're seeing is very much uh, geared towards, um, you know, uh, the sponsor uh, where we're able to see uh, that information at sort of a dashboard level, um, you know, uh, with a lot of really important information right, right here at, at, at our fingertips. This is where, this is where I get excited about, you know, seeing things kind of, you know, come together uh, in, a, in a very smooth and transparent way. Um, you know, there's another kind of screenshot here that shows you a little behind the scenes in terms of, uh, you know, additional functionality, where this can translate into, uh, you know, the uh, actual uh, trial participant dispensation of the drug. What we're going to look work towards next uh, is really doing that, you know, machine to machine integration uh, and really get this uh, platform up and running, um, you know, eventually across our, um, you know, across our uh, portfolio. The, the ecosystem is going to get a lot more complicated when you think about DCT in particular. Um, you know, DCT, I think, is a great concept, um, you know, uh, in, and certainly direct to patient being a component of that. Uh, I think that's the direction we need to go into. But now you're talking about introducing, uh, you know, uh, central pharmacies. Um, you know, you're talking about like, how is that release? Uh, you know, like, how do we oversee that release? Um, there's going to be actually, I feel like a lot of burden that's going to be placed on sites um, because they have to coordinate, you know, not only receiving the medication, but now, you know, in cases where patients are at home, you know, they're often the center point of coordinating, um, you know, the patient and, and when delivery is going to be there. So to me, you know, when I take a step back, I was having a conversation with some of, uh, Craig, you'd re recognize some of our uh, colleagues from, from your prior uh, position where we talked about this. And, you know, that's where I kind of chimed in and said, look, a, a solution like KitChain um, is needed, you know, for these type of complex environments that we're navigating because, you know, how are we going to be able to see all this information and in which system? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, for this, this was really our first practical, like, you know, entry point into this world. Um, so, you know, it was really at the kit level. This question feeds into overall IMP accountability um, and how specific do we get, you know, and there's other components to it, like, you know, destruction and returns and things like that. All of that is certainly on the you know, horizon for some of the goals that we have, but for this specific um, pilot that we ran, we didn't get to that level. But hopefully soon, hopefully I'll be back here next year and the year after kind of, you know, with the KitChain team expanding on uh, how, how we've developed this.